Andy Davis reporting. Well, every time we've asked for an interview with Patricia Hewitt about the junior doctor's crisis, she's been unavailable. We offered her an open invitation to come on the programme three weeks ago. Tonight, she's accepted. She's with us now. Uh, Secretary of State, it's hard to overstate the gravity of this disaster. Uh, you have crashes, delays, eventually two very serious security breaches. You apologised three times. Mm -hmm. Now you've had to abandon it altogether. Where does the buck stop? Surely with you, you now yourself have to resign. There are very serious problems, not with the underlying principles of modernising medical careers. We heard a bit of that from one junior doctor there. But with the implementation this year, which has simply not been good enough. It's caused all these problems and distress for junior doctors, which is exactly why I've apologised for it, because I think when something like that goes wrong, you say sorry, and then you get on with putting it right. Well, and that's what we're we've doing. spelt that out, but surely mm. the point does come eventually where you have to say enough's enough. I'm afraid that I am responsible for this and I should go. I absolutely take responsibility for it, and that's why I am working so closely with the medical royal colleges, with the BMA, including representatives of junior doctors, through their review group to ensure that we actually put this right and give junior doctors fair access to training posts and other jobs this year and ensure that the NHS has so the doctors the it needs to go on caring for The only for casualties patients. are patients who are going to have to have operations delayed in some cases, clinics that have to be suspended, junior doctors who've gone through hell, but no politician will have to suffer in any form. And what about the company? Are you fining the company? As far as my own and political responsibility goes, of course there are situations where ministers should resign. And I've made it very clear, you know, if a minister is responsible for a policy mistake, a major policy mistake, or they act unethically, something of that kind, of course a minister should go, and I would in those circumstances. What we've got here is a policy, modernising medical careers, that's been developed over years with a great deal of involvement and consultation with the medical profession. But which has fouled and up through with, sheer incompetence. Well, with very widespread support. And remember that actually the foundation program, the first two years of modernising medical careers, was introduced two years ago, 2005, and is working extremely but successfully. But there was no support for an incompetent computer system which fouled up just as badly as this one. Again, are you going to find the company? What sort of trouble is the company in? Well, the, the, there's a specific issue around the security breach. We've had a particular investigation of that, and that's something we will go on discussing with the company itself. This is Although, six million pounds worth of taxpayers' money. Yes, but the security breach was a, there were two security breaches, as you reported. They were potentially very serious indeed. We took them very seriously. The minute we heard about the first one, which was the confidential applicant data, those web pages got taken down. But you have a method for checking whether these sites are secure. Was it ever subjected to those checks? The, the, there were full checks done early on. There was an audit done when problems started to emerge earlier in the year. Not security problems, just more general problems. The, the contract itself was placed with an approved provider. Although I have asked the Office of Government Commerce just but to look back over the procurement, just even to see you if we need up to learn some lessons system from that. Would have put a password in. There wasn't even a password. And hang on a minute. There was a there not only a password. There was pretty extensive security protection for the whole site. What happened on the 25th of April was that additional information about the new generation of candidates, the the new medical graduates, was put onto web pages each with a unique identifier for each of the regional postgraduate deaneries. This was not the kind of site you know, that you or I would have tumbled, sort of stumbled across on our home computer or found just you know, by the entering some search. The only people likely search. to stumble across it were the people who had an interest in, in seeing what was going on. Well, and then it was wide I, open for them to do so, no, was, and even to inspect each other's I, applications. There was a second problem that arose the following day in relation to the email messages. But on the issue of the very confidential data which was the, the first and I think the most security, uh, the most uh, uh, troublesome and serious security breach. Immediately we heard about it. We got on to the contractor. Those web pages were taken down. No, the but extraordinary they thing, Secretary not. of State, was that the first time it happened, you did nothing at all. You basically brought it to the attention of the, of the company, but the site was left there. And the next day, no, no, there the, it was no, another no, no, breach. No, no. The web page. You should have shut it immediately. No, it was not the site as a whole that had a security problem. It was web pages that had been added to the site for the specific mm. use of the deaneries because they had a mm. fresh round of applicants coming through. Each well, of those... No, I, I, well, it's we're getting very dense here and I've got very limited time. A, and I must put some there's points... There's a very important yeah. point about it because as soon as we discovered that confidential data mm. was potentially available, 
those pages were closed yes. down. But frankly, they were all, not all the accessed by members of the public. The system failed for whatever the reason. The system and failed. We'll it, it shouldn't have done. Right. As I say, the, there's evidence, I'm afraid, that criminal offences may well have been committed. Well, we'll we come put to that the whole in a moment. In the hands let, of the let, let's just, just get on to what happens to these doctors. Mm. Because you may have uh, killed off the software, but you haven't killed off the application form and the system by which people are being mm. recruited. And there's a whole cohort of doctors who've gone through on that original mm. system, and now you have about 15,500 doctors who are subjected to a lesser chance to get the best jobs. And that is because you are leaving that original cohort in place that was selected by this flawed system. Well, what we've done, we had the original group who were shortlisted as a result of the, the online computer application and the selection system. There were then real worries about that and whether the scoring system that lots of people have been involved in devising was actually fair. And when all of those problems started to emerge, what we did at the request of the Royal Colleges themselves was to set up a review group independently chaired by Professor Neil Douglas from the Academy with the Medical Royal Colleges, the BMA, representatives of junior doctors. Now, the first thing they looked at was should we simply scrap the whole thing and you know, go back to last sure. year's system decided, for another year. They decided basically they that the decided, first lot would go through, and they have. No, and you've they, now got 15,500 people who've got to be interviewed. They're all being given an no, interview, but those decided, top jobs have gone. No, 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 that's not the case at all. No jobs have gone. What happened was... Every single job that was open when this awful disaster started is open tonight, correct? Yes. That's not yes. how we're being told about well, it. We're being told that actually well, a good number of them went through on that MTAS system. No, no. What has happened was... All the jobs that were available, uh, apart from the GPs, they were dealt with under a separate system, but all the other jobs, the specialist jobs that were available, went up onto MTAS. Mm. People applied, well, hang on, and yeah. some people were shortlisted and got one, two or three interviews, okay. sometimes four. Well, again, okay. we're getting just two days. No, but listen, I, I all think we're those... all getting lost on this. What I think let I need me to make put the to point, you is John, this, you... No, let me, sorry, yeah. you, you asked me on, yeah. I'm very keen to answer these yeah. questions, but it's important that we get this straight. What has happened? is that the review group, the Medical Royal Colleges and the BMA, with the involvement of the junior doctors, has said all the interviews that were arranged through the original shortlisting process should stand. Right. Everybody who I'm wasn't to shortlisted I'm going to have to should leave get that. an interview State, for their you've, top you've priority told us what's job. Happened. And that you've is what's, what's happening. Happened, I'm going to put two points to you. Mm. One is your first reaction, literally, when you got to the House of Commons after the uh, security breach was to shoot the messenger, was to say that you were going to uh, talk to Ofcom, talk to the regulatory authorities, and now you say a criminal offence has been, very possibly may have been committed. Let's be quite clear, there's only one batch of people who could, who could have committed a criminal offence, that's either us or the junior doctors who access that site. And it's sheer nonsense to suppose that there's a case against either of us. That is a smokescreen to prevent us seeing the evidence that's been brought forward by that committee. My first reaction... True or false? No. My first reaction was, had nothing to do with Channel 4 News or anything else. My first reaction was, first of all, dismay that there had been this very serious security breach. Secondly, checking that that information had all been taken off the site so that nobody else could possibly access it. But this it. is dismay Thirdly, that's taken three sure, weeks to cook. Well, hold on. It's taken, it's taken three weeks to cook. The system has been flawed, has collapsed several times, crashed in the last three or four months. Doctors were complaining back in January. And all you can do is to say, well, we've got it all right now. Everybody gets an interview. No, Secretary of State, there are people who are losing operations. There are patients whose treatment is going to be delayed. There are consultants who are having to give up days and weeks of their time, which should be spent with patients, trying to cope with this disaster, and you say it's all know, under control. I know, I'm not saying that. I, you know, I know it took a bit of time to get me on, because I said I would come on when the security investigation was finished. I would like to answer one question at a time, instead of being constantly well, we've got interrupted. we've 20 seconds left, well, Secretary just State. let me say, we sorted out the security breach, we have apologised for that, there is evidence of criminal offence, and on our lawyer's advice we have passed that to the police. I am not making any accusations against anybody. I am simply ensuring that is looked at. And with the leadership of the medical profession, we ensure every doctor is interviewed, at least for their top well, speciality said, I job. I come back and when, when we discover offers, that there are no prosecutions for any criminal offence. Because I think you would recognise it's highly unlikely. The most important thing here is to ensure, having sorted out the security problem, that junior doctors are fairly interviewed that is happening at the moment. Job offers will start being made next week, and then State, we there will be further, further opportunities for junior doctors to we apply. We must leave it there. I'm grateful for you for coming in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now.